Okay, in this video I'm going to uh, show you the equipment it takes to start with a rock like this and end up with a pendant like that. Okay, this here is our small slab saw. And it's in the garage because it uses oil. I don't want it in the house. It kind of smells a little. It's a little loud when it runs too. But the lid just, uh, hopefully we can see in here. The lid just opens like that. That's a 12 inch uh, blade in there. So it can cut sort of a, uh, about a four inch by six inch rock. Uh, we'll run through and it fits in the vise. You can see a black rock in there right now. And uh, that vise and there's a threaded rod down here. And the vise runs along automatically through it. And the slice falls off down there once it's done. And then you uh, can just adjust it by this thing. You pull, you pull the whole vise back. And you turn it over exactly how much you want. It could be a quarter inch or three eighths or whatever. And then you run it through again and, and get a slice. And here, a couple pieces I'll just put right there. That's the end piece. And that slice probably came off a little bit uh, before that end piece. And you can see that's a pretty thin one right there. Whoa, it's kind of glary, but. Something like that. That's green aventurine from Quebec. That one's kind of very transparent, that piece. And that's that's it there. You can see lots of mica in that piece. So that's where we start off with a rough rock and uh, start slicing it. Uh, okay, this is a trim saw. This one's on its way out, it's been used a long time. I've switched from oil in it to water uh, because it's in my basement and uh, I, I don't want to cut oil in here. It kind of spreads around a little. So I'm going to switch to a different type of saw pretty soon. So I didn't mind if it uh, wrecks the case. You can see it's a little rusted. But it's because it's water. It's not really good on the blade because it's sitting in the water all the time. So it will the diamonds will fall out, kind of rusted out. But these do straight cuts. So here I've, if I show you, I have a piece of petrified wood, a slice like that, that's come out of the other saw. And I would just cut straight lines like that. So I just made a marker. If I wanted that oval piece in there, I'd cut a straight line, then I'd cut the other straight line, then I would cut it closer to the oval. And I would just run it through this uh, saw blade here, like going like that, straight through. And you just push it with your hand and then you end up with a rough piece that can be taken over to the grinders. Okay, over here I have my grinding stations and uh, these are all different setups. When I first started I had this machine right here. And it had uh, three wheels on each side of the motor. And I've, I've just changed how I do it. But they would be uh, one and a half inch wheels. And there'd be three. Two of them would be steel like this one. This is a, happens to be a uh, eight inch. And that machine's a six inch. But they're uh, diamonds. So you'd have two of these one a 100 one a 220 so these ones are 100s these ones are 220 and you shape them with that it's it's steel and it's hard so you don't get a uh, you can't have to keep moving but you'll get flat spots so you just rough shape it out like that and then uh, so this machine originally would have had two steel ones and uh, one of these uh, uh, belt type like a resin bonded wheel here and then three more here and that's all you need to be finished polishing there so out of the trim saw you have pieces say like that that was a cut out of a slice and I because I have two machines here I would start off grinding on the 100 
and then go to the 220 and then visit each station uh, these are once you're over here you're not really you're just rounding it a bit more and then taking scratches out same as over here and by here you should be polished on most stones by 3000 diamond grit so like I said I've modified these a little because I like it a little better uh, I find these belts these are rubber expanding wheels with a belt on it and it's much uh, more economical because for the you know once I have this wheel here I buy this belt as a fraction of the cost of a one and a half inch wheel and I'm getting two and a half inches here right so it's uh, I just find it much better so here I put my four on this machine it seems to be able to handle it okay this machine's cut a lot of stones over the years and then here is just an arbor that I put my own motor on the back and it's an 8 inch so I have 8, eight inch wheels here and I just put two together just because one was worn out and I have the room so I put two so when I'm doing it I can feel the difference one is a little uh, more worn out so on a softer stone where I don't want to be too aggressive I can use it and if I need to take material off I find a more aggressive part on it that's all and the same is with the 220 wheels this one I had extra space here I'm going to change it but it's a belt it's a 3000 diamond grit and on the 8 inches actually is 3 inches instead of uh, two and a half here and it's a belt very uh, economical to buy them that way and uh, I don't use it too often but on some stones it really helps bring out a polish if there's a little haze in it or it's a little softer stone but what I do I good thing I put a sink right in here I use uh, water and that way so I just have my overflow bucket and I put warm water in there and then I put water in each of these containers these ones just come out I just lift the top here and uh, can't do it with one hand but anyways these little trays just just lift out and I can dump them out and clean them and I put them in that pail I don't dump that in the sink and same as here I just put warm water in here so my hands are always working in warm water it's not really cold it's much better in your hands long term I do a lot of stones so this one just drains out there if there's an overflow so I have to actually tip, tip the machine up so it pours out there when these other ones I just drain like that and then I have an overflow bucket that I empty that in so it doesn't silt up my drains because it's a very fine silt it will uh, eventually could clog your drain you don't want to do that so I have an overflow bucket there that uh, drains out my backyard and uh, the bucket will just keep the sediment down in the bottom instead of your drain so that way I keep all warm water on my hands and uh, oh yeah and this little guy here is a bubbler some some equipment that's what these holes are for up here is you can have water dripping down over each of your wheels and you have to have a water supply for that well this way I I don't I just put water in these trays and this is a, a bubbler so it actually uh, by using air it it pops water up under the wheels and keeps them keeps them damp if you use these wheels dry they will uh, get wrecked really fast they'll, they'll either warm up or melt and you'll lose the diamonds in them same as these they'll uh, get too hot and really clog up with uh, with uh, the rock material so you got it keeps them clean and it keeps these belts cool so you just start off with a piece like that and you can end up over here with a shiny piece of jewelry wash it off there and I'm all set to go okay I just thought I would show you some of the things that I'm doing with that equipment in the other videos and this is just a group of uh, cabochons that I've made for jewelry making like you can see that one's flat on the back try not to make it too blurry that's Amazonite from uh, Quebec, those two pieces actually. 
Uh, this is a uh, Canadian Labradorite. That's a nice piece. You get a nice flash in that. And the blue ones there are Lapis Azuli. And there's a Tiger's Eye there. This is Udialite. That's from Quebec as well. This is a Moss Agate here. So that actually looks nice when you pick it up. You can see right through the parts with green chlorite mineral going through. That's a piece of jade. There's a piece of two pieces of aventurine there. And that's from Quebec as well. We got rhodonite from British Columbia. There's uh, rhodochrosite from Argentina. And there's some uh, rubian fuchsite. That's that one, that one, and then one that's more blue. That's rubian fuchsite as well. I'll try and get a better picture of that. You can see it's blue. And this is... Uh, what else do we have here? Well, lots of different ones, but you can see. I'll show you another uh, finished stones I make. Uh, yeah, that's chrysocolla, and that's another chrysocolla. Mostly azurite. It's not a very good picture of it because it's very, very deep blue. But, uh, and that's one thing I do. I make these and uh, sell them to jewelers. A few of them I, I use myself for uh, jewelry, but most of them I sell too at different places or to club members or local uh, lapidary club the jewelry makers like them okay, and here is a <clears throat> collection of uh, ready pendants I have just happens to be ones that I've been working on recently and uh, here you can see some moonstone this in when you move it around has a nice silvery flash in it and, there's a piece of uh, Canadian Labradorite there. You can see it's darker than the stuff. This is more the Madagascar stuff there. You can see the little bit greener flash and some uh, Amazonite there from Quebec. And that's uh, Aventurine from uh, India. And there's some Aventurine from uh, Quebec. It's a little... Uh, a little more uh, sparkle flakes in it. Star that one's darker. It's not always darker like that. This is, uh, well, there's a scapolite from Quebec, and this is uh, a sodalite from Bancroft. And so I have stones from all over. Ooh, there's another beautiful Labradorite there. And some Chrysocolla. The center there are those five pieces and there's some Larimar at the top and that's why I have the equipment and these are the ones that in that geode video I did are uh, polished on both sides and a groove cut in the edge so you can just put them on a quarter chain like that hopefully that's uh, coming in and that's a Banded iron from Labrador. It has sparkle in it from specular hematite. But that's a nice stone as well. And remember, if you like my videos, to give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.